Hey y'all and welcome to Monner's Market and welcome to my fun and easy sublimation ideas video. Today's video is sponsored by Hippo. They were kind enough to send me a few products to try out and show you how they work. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But before I do that, I just want to thank everybody for hanging in there with me the last couple of weeks while I had to take some time off due to family issues and simply some mental health time that I greatly needed. I do feel so much better and refreshed and ready to go. So let me show you what Hippo sent us to try out. So when they sent me this box, I truly had no idea what they were sending. They ended up sending me some sublimation tumblers, which worked great. And then this ink is refillable ink that you just put into your cartridges when you're out of your ink in your sublimation printer. And the colors are super vibrant. The black is way bigger than the rest because generally you will use more black ink than anything. And then they also sent me some sublimation paper. And the paper you can use on literally anything you can think of. You can use it on fabric. You can use it on cups. You can use it on like acrylic. Um, if you can put heat to it to transfer it over to your sub your surface then you can use this transfer paper on it or this sublimation paper on whatever you're using so as long as it's you know will hold up to heat because you have to the thing about sublimation is it does this it literally takes the ink from the paper and it almost melts it into like your shirt or your tumbler and it causes it to become one it sort of releases this gas and it goes from print to gas back to print on whatever surface you're using. So that's how sublimation technically works. These cups were amazing. They came with some straws that were metal and they each had their own little brush, which I loved the fact that they had their own little brush. You know, because usually if I'm trying to find a straw cleaner, I've got one that I'm sharing with all of the straws. And this little black little thing right here goes on the bottom just to give you a non-stick surface for the bottom of your cup, which I thought that was kind of neat too. And what I like to do, a lot of people don't, but I like to take these sublimation cups and put a print on it and then epoxy over it. But I didn't this time because my daughter sent me this and she wanted me to make it for her. So I looked up the thing I bought it on Etsy for $3.99. I will put the link to this in my description box. And I printed it out on some of the new sublimation paper that they sent me. Now, whenever you are printing out your sublimation print, always remember that it is going to look a lot duller when you first print it out on the paper and when you first print or, you know, when you first transfer your thing. It's always going to look dull, but once it sets in and cools off, it's going to get brighter. So don't like freak out when you print it and it comes out really dull. It will actually be so much brighter when it cools off, like I said, and whenever you transfer it, it is brighter. Now this cup, this particular print is not made to be super duper bright. So it's not going to come out bright, but that's the way my daughter likes it. She's not a blingy person at all. She doesn't like glitter. She don't want all that extra stuff. So I wrapped it. I put it in my heat tumbler press and pressed it for the allotted time, which I think is like two minutes. And I took it out, turned it over because this didn't quite shut all the way and pressed it on the other side. Now, I couldn't find my daggum gloves. I do not, by any means, recommend you doing this without the gloves that comes with your, your press because it is extremely hot to handle. Or just set it aside. It's not going to hurt it to let the paper sit on it while it cools down. It's not going to hurt it at all. Now, when I was printing this, look how light the colors are. See how light it is? Now, right there in the middle, I forgot to go back and trim the piece off where it overlapped right there, and I screwed it up, but she's literally like she could care less about that. She just wanted on the front. She and her husband are the ones that are pastors at our local church, and 
she loved this cup. She fell in love with it. But look now, look at that. Look how bright those colors are now that it has had time to set and bring the color in. Look how much more beautiful that is. I love it. I love that you can make it dull and then all of a sudden it's bright like this again. Now for DIY number two, this does not have anything to do with sublimation, but I had to throw it in this video because it literally will not work with any other video for anything else that I do because y'all know I don't normally do these kind of videos. So my granddaughter Macy asked me to make her this little clip that goes on her iWatch or her Apple Watch cord. And again, I bought these off of Etsy. I will have the link below in case you want to make you some. And I am going to use the pink and silver glitter like she requested. And I am going to use some UV resin from Counterculture DIY. All of my resin, no matter what kind it is, whether it's UV or facet or just the regular medium viscosity, it all comes from Counterculture DIY. I've tried every epoxy out there and they have the absolute best. Now, this UV requires a UV light to cure. So what I found out though, and I think it has everything to do with the kind of mold you use. The molds come in different colors, blue, pink, clear. The clear ones, you can use a UV light and the whole thing will cure at one time. But with these colored ones, it's a little bit harder to cure them. So you'll see me pour everything in at one time on the first one. And then you'll see me do it in layers on the next ones because I found that you can only cure a little bit at a time with the colored molds because the light cannot transfer through. And if I would have thought about it, I would have known that ahead of time. But the UV light needs to be able to penetrate that epoxy and it can't really, that UV can't penetrate through that blue color. I hope that makes sense. It needs to be clear for the penetration to take place. So anyway, I'm just using a little bit of UV resin. I'm putting a little bit of glitter in there. And now one of these, this one here has a little bow on the head for to make it Minnie Mouse. The other one is Mickey. It does not have a bow and they come as a set. So anytime you use epoxy, you always want to take your heat gun and hit it when you're done and it does two things it liquefies it again you know in case it's starting to harden up just a tiny bit and gets it down into your mold better and it pops all of the bubbles that are left now all of that that you see right there in the middle don't worry about that we can peel that off and it'll come off really easy once it's cured so i turn the light on it has a 30 second setting and a 60 second setting and I used the 60 second setting. Once it was done, I took just the clear resin and put it on the top to sort of even the bottom out because you know it did have the glitter in it and put a little bit too much. So I just transferred it over to the other side. Now this is where you'll see me do it in layers here. I just did a little clear coat in on the bottom and then I pulled it out. And these came with those little Mickey molds right there and they're just little i don't remember what they're called like these little clay cutouts or little rubber cutouts but anyway it came free as sort of like a thank you and i just put some in the ears and i thought because i put a clear bottom you would be able to see it better but what happened is some of that pink seeped up under those little things but anyway it sort of flushed and drowned it out the color but it was still cute when it was over now this i'm just using the silver sparkly glitter here to make her i made her like three or four of them i don't remember how many i made and i know you've heard me say before if you watch my channel a lot i always have extra molds sitting around when i'm using resin because you don't want to throw that stuff away it does it's not cheap and it's just wasteful so these are little earrings that i had left over or you know, these are, this is an earring mold, should I say, and I'm using the resin that I had left over to make her a couple of pair of earrings. There's another little set that you'll see me show at the end that I'm not showing you make because that doesn't have anything to do with sublimation. And I was trying to just throw this in there and 
kind of bring it all together. Now I'm just going to put a teeny bit of that big chunky glitter just to sort of bring this set of earrings together and have a little bit more of that chunky glitter at the bottom and just make it look cute. So anyway, once I got them finished, look at how cute they turned out and they work perfectly. They are absolutely the exact size that you need for your iWatch charger. I have an iWatch charger too. This is me. This is how easy it is just to clean up everything that is left over when you're done and you just take a little knife, you know, a little utility knife, a crafting knife, whatever you want to call it, and you just clean up the little spots. Now, what I'm doing on the ears, some of that glitter was poking out a little bit, and I just cleaned it up, but these turned out so stinking cute, and the earrings actually turned out really cute too, and they fit on that charger perfectly. Now, this is what I'm telling you about having a mold to the side to use in case you have any leftover epoxy this is just some little cute turtles and i had just enough left in there to do one of the little turtles and i filled it up stuck it in there and gave her a little keychain with it now when i'm showing you this in the end you won't see the little earring latches on the end you know the part that actually makes it an earring that goes in your ear because when i got them i just went ahead and put them on it and give them to her and forgot to go back in, record that part. But all you would have seen me doing is put the little earring piece on the tip end of those earrings. Super easy. Now I'm just cleaning up my molds with a wet wipe. Very, very easy to clean. And then I decided, you know what? I want to make one more for Sarah. My oldest or my youngest daughter is a big Disney fan like we are too. So this is me just trying it on the end of my little iWatch holder and look at how perfectly it fits. It is absolutely perfect. I think I put this one on upside down, but anyway, I want to show you by putting the watch on it that it does work with the watch on it. That's not usually where I have my charger, but I, in order to film it, I couldn't like maneuver around the table where it was plugged in back, plugged in at. But anyway, yeah, they do work. They work perfectly. It fits like a glove it's not loose it won't fall off and look at how cute it makes the little tip end of your iWatch charger I just think it's a brilliant brilliant idea whoever came up with this was a genius especially for people who are huge Disney fans like we are but look at it it's perfect so anyway I hope you liked them Macy I loved making them for you and look at this I need to make me one for myself is what I need to do but anyway, I'm going to show you everything that I made for her in the end. These are the two that she wanted. She wanted one in silver, one in pink, and I thought they turned out super cute. And here's the rest of the stuff that I made for her. That's the one that I added those little clay pieces to. And look at how cute these are, y'all. Look at those earrings. I thought the earrings turned out really pretty. Just to not you know, expect to make earrings. I just was like, oh, wow, this is the leftover I had there. And then that little bit of leftover for that keychain. But look how cute. Now, this is me making some t-shirts. I took the three girls to Disney last week for the week, and we had a blast. But again, when you print your, your image, it's going to be very dull. Look how dull it is on this paper. But again, these weren't really made to be super bright images when you transfer them. So when you transfer them the sh on the shirts, they're not going to be that bright. But if you want a super bright image, then you're going to have to pick a different, um, you know, a different picture. But the pictures that we wanted, the ones that we picked, just didn't happen to be super bright, whether it was the cup or the shirts. And if I would have thought about it, I would have done something really bright just to show you that you can sublimate and have really beautiful, bright, vibrant colors. But anyway, I put them in my heat press, pressed it down. I put the little picture on the front and I put our names on the back and they all turned out really, really cute. The girls picked out this particular image 
for us for our shirt to wear to Disney on the first day. And they loved them. They were so happy with them. And they looked so stinking cute on them. But thank you to Hippo for sending us these products. I was very, very pleased with everything. I was pleased with the cups. I was pleased, definitely pleased with the quality of those cups and the little steel straws and the, especially the fact that they each had their own little cleaner. I was very impressed with the paper and the ink and how beautiful and vibrant everything turned out. Again, like I said, these were not, this print was not made to be super vibrant, but it still turned out super cute. Look at all the colors. You can see all of the colors really, really well, and they all turned out so precious. Now, this one, when I lifted it and put it down, I had to sneeze. My hand came up just a hair, and <laughs> it made it off just a tiny bit, but if you didn't know what you were looking for, you wouldn't even be able to tell. But when you are sublimating and you're pressing with your press, definitely hold it down. Make sure you don't have no kind of distraction because if you move that top the tiniest bit, your image is going to also move. But anyway, again, like I said, thank you Hippo for sending us these amazing products. I loved them. And again, I just wanted to add in that little Disney thing, those things that I made for Macy, because I really don't have any other video that it kind of would have fit into right, because I, I'm doing a lot of work with wood and things like that right now. So thank you again for being patient with me the last couple of weeks and coming back today. I am so happy that you decided to come back and not abandon me. I have the absolute best viewers in the world. I almost said subscribers, but a lot of you aren't subscribed to my channel and still watch religiously. So for those, I'm talking to you directly, reach over and hit that little red subscribe button. It's super easy. It's free. It doesn't cost you a thing. It doesn't cause me to send you a ton of different notifications and things unless you hit the little bell and go down to all. And then the only thing it's going to do is notify you every time I upload either a video or something on my community tab. So for all of you who are in my live chat tonight, thank you for coming back and being here for me. Thank you for always being here for me. As always, I will see you next Tuesday night at 8 p.m. with brand new content. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Be blessed. Bye now.